Hello everyone, Terry here from GoTreasureHunting.com and um, I've been getting a lot of questions lately about coils. Uh, metal detector coils come in three flavors. Um, concentric, double D, and mono loop. All right, now let's talk a little bit about um, these types of coils, the three types of coils. A concentric coil is often confused with a monoloop coil. It, it is not a monoloop coil. Uh, as a matter of fact, a monoloop coil is used on uh, pulse induction machines and can both transmit and receive. So a monoloop coil cannot be used on a VLF machine. Now, the concentric coil on a VLF machine consists of a large outer transmitter coil and a smaller inner receiver coil. So you have two working coils in the concentric coil, but they are uh, not together. They are separated. One is a transmitter coil, one is a receiver coil. The smaller of the two will be the receiver coil. Now, <clears throat> on the double D coil, and it's called that because the coil wrapping is not circular, it's in the form of a D. And what they do is they put the one D down and then they turn the other one over so it's like a reverse D and they set that down on top of the other coil. Um, the outer coil is the, uh, the one that's on top is usually the transmitter coil and the one that's on the bottom is usually the receiver coil. But because of the um, way that the coils, the two coils are lined up with each other, it has a completely different uh, search pattern than the concentric coil. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the search patterns. Uh, on a standard, uh, on, on a concentric coil, um, the search pattern below the coil is like an upside down pyramid. Um, or some call it an, uh, an upside down bowl. Um, basically it starts very wide at the actual face of the coil down to about two inches. And then it starts to, um, create and go down to a uh, point like a pyramid down at the very bottom of its uh, search capability. So it looks like a, a, almost like a V starting at the coil and going down to uh, the bottom of its search capability. And that is um, very difficult for some people to uh, actually use the coil properly because you need to, um, uh, really take time and go slow to cover all the ground that you want to cover, uh, especially at depth because of the way that the coil sees the ground. Now, with your double D coil, because of the way that the uh, two coils are situated, it it's more like a... Um, instead of a bowl or a pyramid, it just goes straight down and it goes from the top of the coil to the bottom of the coil. Uh, but it doesn't, uh, it only has a strip of maybe an inch to two inches that it's actually detecting. So the width of the search area on the coil, on the coil is not as great as it is with the uh, concentric coil. And I'm trying to, um, show you examples of this through some of the illustrations that I'm putting up. And you can always go back to these illustrations. Um, a lot of people really prefer the double D coils 
because in, uh, in mineralized ground, like out in the gold fields or in the uh, red uh, Georgia clay, um, in these areas, the double D coil is a miracle worker because it handles this highly mineralized soil so much better. It's so much stable, more stable than a concentric coil. Uh, and it goes uh, deeper. Uh, you're able to uh, set your threshold at a more label, uh, a more level, um, listenable uh, tone. Um, whereas with the concentric coil, you sometimes be jumping all over the place. It just depends on the soil. Uh, the concentric coil can actually uh, lose a lot of depth in highly mineralized soil, and it becomes very unstable. So the DD coil, the double D coil, or the butterfly coil, as it's sometimes called, is a desirable coil uh, for most people doing metal detecting. Uh, now, with that said, the concentric coil is actually deeper than a DD coil in mild to moderate soils. But again, you have to be more astute at slowly uh, going over your target areas, uh, making sure that you're getting the coverage that you're not getting with the, or that you would be getting rather with the DD coil. You've got to slow way down with the concentric coil and go at much smaller increments to make sure that you're covering the same area. So again, the DD coil is the one that is really uh, the one that people are after these days. Now, why is the DD coil more expensive than the concentric coils? Um, and I guess the concentric coils are mainly used on beginner machines, on lower cost machines. And the, you'll see the DD coils on the more uh, moderately priced expensive machines. The reason for that is a DD coil is much more expensive to make. You know, you can't uh, just use a wire wrapping machine like you would for an, a circular coil. These, uh, these, some of these coils are actually hand wrapped. So um, again, you know, you the the DD coil. There's more to it. There's more tuning involved because it is a more unstable coil. So it it needs electronics to. Um, actually make it a more stable coil um, but you know th this is in the machine that you buy um, I'm going to be including um, some links uh, to the uh, Tech Chance uh, blog spot to uh, DetectorProspector.com that's Steve Hershenbach um, to the Fisher Labs uh, Dave Johnson papers um, and I want you to check these out because uh, these links will take you to some information that is just invaluable uh, and would take me forever to just go over here on my own because I don't want to just read these things to you. I think you can uh, do that on your own. But um, I think it's important that you um, go and read some of these um, articles um, for instance, Steve Hershenbach, he says the concentrics have more consistent detection patterns with less dead spots up close. And he says, have you ever noticed how the DD coil goes wacky on shallow targets and concentric coils are much better at identifying flat ferrous targets like bottle caps? Um, you know, these are things that you're not going to learn from just anybody. You need to you need to go and kind of search this subject out a little bit. Um, he references Dave Johnson, who, if you know anything about metal detectors, you know that Dave is an incredible engineer who's developed many machines that we've worked with in the past and today. Um, and Dave talks about search coil shapes like uh, round, elliptical, um, and in general, elliptical pro, uh, coils uh, provide a broader sweep pattern over the ground, uh, but a narrower uh, target response uh, for better pinpointing. Um, you know, again, he, he says round coils are easier to design and less expensive to manufacture, which is why they're the most common. Um, 
you need to, um, again, check out these different um, uh, links that I'm providing here. Um, and, you know, it'll help you to understand uh, what you're purchasing for the machine that you're using and why you're purchasing it and what you can expect from it. Uh, for instance, search coil size. So many people ask me, is it really worth it to get a larger coil? Well, um, it depends. It depends on what you're looking for and where you're looking. Uh, for instance, um, what is the average depth of a 15-inch uh, coil? Well, it's about 15 inches. Uh, what's the average depth of a 10-inch coil? Well, it's about 10 inches. So whatever the diameter of your search coil is, is about what you'll be expecting to get in depth. But then there's a lot more that goes into it, for instance, which is the quality of the machine that you're using the coil on and its electronics. Um, so that's gonna affect your depth as well. Um, so, you know, these are things to think about when you're picking up a search coil um, and things that you, you really need to, uh, think about uh, when you're spending hundreds of dollars on a search coil. Why are some of these coils so much? Well, some of these coil manufacturers, they have um, secret numbers of wines. Um, they have different uh, types of copper wiring that they use. And some of these coils give you an edge, some's just hype. And this is the thing that you need to consider and this is why you need to go beyond just looking at how cool a coil looks or how big it is or how light it is or heavy it is and decide if it's really what you need to accomplish your goals. Um, I personally use a, a small Joey coil uh, when I'm, uh, and that's like a, a five inch coil when I'm in really trashy, uh, areas and I need uh, really good separation and uh, um, but again you know with a with a five inch coil you're not going very fast you're not covering a lot of area whereas if you had a 15 inch coil in the same area you'd be covering a lot more area but you'd be constantly getting garbage signals so there's things that you give up there's things that you gain using different coils so I hope that if you have some questions, um, that you'll look up these different um, links that I'm providing to you. I think they're extremely important when you're looking at uh, getting more knowledge about coils, DD coils, concentric coils, mono loop coils, um, and seeing exactly how they work, uh, what the effects are, uh, what soils they work best in. Put all that information together and then go out and get yourself the coils that you need to add to your bag. Folks, this is Terry from GoTreasureHunting.com. And before I sign off, I just want to remind you that um, we're going to be giving away the Nocta Macro Simplex Plus uh, when we reach 7,500 subscribers. Uh, we're at about 7,150 now. And... Um, I'm going to have a couple of more pop-up giveaways um, before we hit 7,500. So please um, subscribe, ring that bell. And if you enjoyed this video, if it helped you in any way, please like it. Thanks so much. And I hope everybody's doing well out there. This is Terry from GoTreasureHunting.com.